fractions versus decimals. Uh, this is an ongoing struggle for me at, as a professor. On the one hand, yes, every fraction can be written as a decimal and every decimal can be written as a fraction. However, students sometimes try to take this as an excuse to avoid fractions altogether. Uh, and, and I do kind of get it. Okay, For arithmetic purposes, one version is usually, not always, but usually just as good as the other. However, uh, if you need a justification for learning all the operations on fractions, uh, I say that they're going to come up again in other contexts where you can't just convert to a decimal and go forward from there. For example, to add these two fractions together, you're going to have to use the method we talked about earlier for adding two fractions by giving them a common denominator first. So converting from a fraction to a decimal really is as simple as interpreting this fraction as a division problem or a division expression, right? One over two, one half, is the same as one divided by two, right? And at this point, you can go to your calculator, right? Or sometimes, you know, when you've been doing this for a while, there's fractions that you just kind of know, right? You just kind of know that one half is 0.5, and there's your decimal version. Okay, this is a nice one, right? I picked a nice one to start with. Um, this is an example of what's called a terminating decimal. I mean, I mean, what, what that means is, is if, if you try doing this by long division, for example, you would get the zero, you get the 0.5, and then you get a zero, and another zero, and another zero, and, and zeros all the way down, right? So essentially, the, the decimal version ends, right? It only has this one digit that we need to worry about. That's not always going to be the case, right? For example, take a look at this thing. Right? If we try to do one-third, well, you go to your calculator, and your calculator is going to tell you something like this. Right? And that's unfortunate. Um, it, it's a little misleading. It makes it look like the decimal version of this is a zero followed by, I don't know how many, three, ten threes, however many threes I put there, however many threes your calculator has space for. And that's not really the case. Right? Those threes actually keep repeating. There's infinitely many threes uh, in the fraction version of one-third. And this is a, a little bit of an issue with uh, fractions versus decimals. Um, every fraction can be written as a decimal, but not necessarily as a decimal with a finite number of digits. Right? To write one-third as a decimal, you have to have infinitely many threes. And the way we write that is by putting these three little ellipses, right? These three little dots uh, after the fraction, uh, after the uh, decimal version. And this gives us, an, this is an example, right, of what's called a non-terminating decimal, or sometimes called a repeating decimal because the digits uh, eventually start to repeat. Now, in practice, I would not actually write it that way. That's way too many threes, right? There's no need to put that many in there. Uh, the general rule is you need to write out enough repetitions so that somebody looking at it could see the pattern, right? And then you can stop. So in practice, I would probably do 0 0.333 and some dots. Might even just do two threes. Uh, and there is another way of doing this. Sometimes you'll see this written with a bar over the repeating part, right? So that says that that three repeats um, all the way down. Okay, so how about going from decimals to fractions? Well, this really is at, as simple as just reading the name of the fraction properly. Right now, I know most people, when, when they see this fraction, they're going to say 0.7, right? And that's fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I do it all the time myself, right? But to see how this is going to convert to a fraction, it, it's helpful to try reading its proper name. Right, the, the kind of the proper name for this would be seven tenths, because once you say it that way, well, that's the fraction version, seven tenths. All right, so let's let's look at another one. Let's say we have something a little bigger, like this thing here. Okay, same thing. I I would if somebody asked me how much, I'd say 0.122. Okay, good. All right, to make this into a fraction, remember that the first place is tenths, then hundredths, then thousandths. So this is 122 thousandths. And there you go, but not not quite, right? Remember, we 7 tenths was already reduced. 7 is prime, right? There was no reducing you could do there. Uh, here, 122 and 1,000, those are both even, 
right? So I can divide both of them by 2. 122 divided by 2 is 61. 1,000 divided by 2 is 500. And there you go. Right? That's really all there is uh, to converting a terminating decimal uh, into a fraction. Okay, so how about non-terminating fractions? Right? What, what about the repeating ones? Uh, there's, there's an interesting little algebra trick that we're going to have to do to do those. Um, and there, there is a little more to it, so I'm, I'm going to put that off, but that's what we're going to talk about in the next lecture.